I just like hanging out there and spending an awful uh, lot of time in uh, in both places. It's just wonderful. There's there's so much culture that we enjoy. Uh, we uh, love the whole lifestyle, the way people live. Uh, the it's so easygoing and yet um, so full and so rich. And uh, it it just draws us back every every year. We um, for the past six years now, is it? Yes, six. we've been uh, we've been rain wintering in Rome and Naples. <laughs> People go to the warm uh, weather places. No, the food is better here. Uh, the temperature is good, and we spend uh, uh, a, a little over a month in Naples and Rome in February into March. Oh, that's great! It's time to go. There's very few uh, people there. Exactly. Winemakers can see you. Uh, the restaurants are not are not crowded. It's just the, and the weather for the most part. It's better than New York in the spring. Oh, yeah. Truthfully. I, I can imagine, yeah. Living With in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not like Chicago. No, no, not no, like no, Chicago. no, exactly. No. I was going to say, live, like no, living in Chicago, I, I understand what your spring is like in New York. So I, I, can, I, I can imagine that the weather over there is much better. And, you know, the, the, I hate sound bites, but, you know, the sound bite you always get about Napoli, a little bit about Rome, but is that it's chaotic. And it sounds to me like, at least from your experience, it's not. Neither city is chaotic. They're they're no. busy. They're bustling, but they're, you know, it's a it's a bustling it's a bustling city, and it's it's an energetic city. If you go down the Via Toledo, the Via Chiara, I mean, it's just wonderful. The people on the street, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 pizza places, which you can get pizza by the slice, the gelato places. It is just it's just there's so much energy in the city uh, that we love we love it and then you walk uh, down by the water the Mergellina and you look and you see Vesuvius I mean it's just it it, it kind of takes your breath away a lot and uh, you know the people are very nice uh, uh, we've never had a, a problem uh, in Naples for the most part uh, people are very helpful the train system is wonderful in fact one of the stations I think the one in the Villa Toledo actually won a prize as best station in Europe a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been to that station and yeah. the model it is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yes, lovely station. I, yeah. You know, they they say chaotic, but chaotic to me to me means that it's out of control. Energy, but energy. It, it's energy. Oh, it's it's exactly, okay. We love. It's we love. It, we love yeah. There's there, there's a big difference there. So yes. Yeah. And of course the food. I mean, one of the reasons we go <laughs> is the food. <laughs> We yes. love the food in both Naples. We love the food uh, in Rome, all over Italy, but we have a special place in our heart, I believe, in our stomach for Naples <laughs> and, and Rome. And uh, we, we tend to try new places, but stick to some of the, our old flavors, some uh, recommended by winemakers, other we just stumbled on on our own, and uh, some recommended uh, by uh, uh, people that we know. Okay. Well, why don't we start with Rome? And... Take as much time as you want. We have a whole hour. We have, you know, so let's do half and half or maybe a little bit more with Rome. But why don't you go ahead and start with, with Rome and, and tell us uh, some of your favorite restaurants and some of your favorite dishes. Oh, uh, well, Ms. Chow can talk about the dishes. <laughs> Other than I, I, can, I, I know you can spend a week doing this, but. but. Well, I'm terrible because I, a lot of restaurants, I ordered the same thing. I have my okay. favorite restaurants, and, and I also we got it down that certain restaurants we have to go to at night, and certain restaurants we have to go in the afternoon, certain on Sunday, and certain on Saturday. My favorite restaurant is Cacchino del 1887. To me, this is the best restaurant in, in uh, Rome for both uh, food and wine. Uh, okay. They have a tremendous wine list, and he has a lot of old wine. That's where I discovered um, uh, the Fiorano Rosso back in 1983 at a 1961. The wine just blew me away. Fabulous, fabulous uh, wine. And uh, he has older wines, though. I've drunk a lot of them now. Uh, last time we were there, he had the Coli Piccioni 1983 uh, Palomaro, which is uh, from Marino, which is not far away. Okay. He also, he also uh, uh, has older Chianti. I think we had a magnum of 74 uh, Villa Antonori, which was in great shape. We were oh, wow. there last time also. And also a number of uh, wines by... Uh, uh, Master Berardino, uh, the Tarassi, and some of the white, the Greco, and of course the uh, uh, Fiano. Uh, and I, he, I come in, and he doesn't give me the wine list. He brings out all the bottles, lines them up, and says, "What do you want, Charles?" <laughs> I, pick, I pick the wine, uh, and uh, it's a great combination, and I love it. It's uh, Francesco, who was the owner, uh, with his brother Ilio, was in uh, the kitchen who went to school with Daniele Cinelli, 
Okay. I know Daniele. Sure. One of Daniele's uh, favorite, who uh, uh, was with Gambro Rosso and now has a guide to Italian wines. Right, right. Very good friends. And often we'll go, Daniele will be there. Uh, Michelle, can you say something more about the food than I can? I'll, I'll, I'll throw something in to go along. Well, Charles always has to have the, uh, the bucatini with uh, alla matriciana, uh, which everyone knows is a tomato based sauce with. Um, uh, guanciale, which is the pork cheek. Pork cheeks, okay. Pork, yeah, and then it's served uh, with uh, grated pecorino romano cheese. And he feels that it's the best, one of the best, if not the best in all of Rome. Oh. <laughs> and it's just one of those classic and this, this is at Kikino, see? Yes. At Kikino, yes. Okay, all right. And then uh, another dish that uh, Charles especially likes is the uh, beans with cotica. <clears throat> Excuse me, Kotika, if, if you don't know what it is, is pork skin. Mm -hmm. And it, okay. it adds a wonderful velvety texture to the sauce for the beans. They're, it's a tomato sauce, and I believe they're borlotti beans, which are the, the like a cranberry bean. And the Kotika is very tender and moist, and it's just absolutely delicious. I, I remember my grandma. Uh, used to make her uh, ragu, Neapolitan style ragu, mm -hmm. with the kotika. So uh, it's it's a dish that you don't find everywhere. It's an old fashioned kind of a, a recipe. And um, of course, the lamb there is wonderful. Uh, the Romans are known for their wonderful. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, abacchio is the baby lamb. It's the suckling lamb, okay. and uh, the the chops are tiny and they just they're bite-sized, but they, the meat, uh, it melts in your mouth. It's so delicious. What do they call the ones that uh, burn your fingers? Oh, scotadita. Okay. Burn, burn your fingers. They're lamb. delicious. Really? Yeah. Charles, I want to go back just for a second. You bet the first wine you mentioned was the Fiorano. Yes. I know we've talked over the years. I know it's a huge favorite of yours. You've had some very old vintages. I do know one restaurant here in Chicago. I'm going to get you here the next time. You still got a few bottles left. I'll, I'll come. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's a 70, I think it's 71. 71 or 74. Oh, 70 was a great, a great vintage. I've yeah. had a number of the bottles, yes. Great but vintage. Even for people that know Italian wine, it's, it's not as celebrated, it's not as famous as it should be. Can you just mention a few words about the Fiorano? Well, one of the, he makes it, he made uh, two whites and a red, and I can never pronounce his name, <laughs> the, the Prince. Oh. Bono, uh, Ludovico, Bono, uh, Ludovico Bonacossi. Yeah. Uh, who was a very famous, it's a very famous uh, Roman family, uh, goes back many years. Uh, he was knighted, his family was knighted by the Pope. Uh, it's a long, long story. We could do a whole lesson, a whole program on this alone. Uh, and his last vintage was 1995. So there are very few left. I have about uh, 10 bottles. And uh, the, uh, a friend of mine has... Uh, Ten more bottles, or twenty more bottles. I'm, I'm wow. thinking as you're talking, it's it's Bon Compagni Ludovisi. Right. I said his name incorrectly, right. so okay. look uh, it up. Uh, he was a prince. I had, I had the Gambro Rosso here. I was looking it up, but go yeah. ahead. Okay. Bon you know, uh, uh, yeah, he was a uh, a prince, uh, and uh, what's amazing is the uh, winery was right across from the Champigny Airport. <laughs> really. Yes. That, I, that must be the only winery in the world across from, from an airport. But. Well, and to make a long story uh, much shorter, uh, the uh, property today was divided uh, between, I'm going to be quick there, between uh, 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 Alessia, Alessia? Alessia. Alessia Antonori, hey. uh, because uh, the prince married, prince's daughter married uh, <laughs> Piero Antonori. And it's, it's a long story, very complicated, very Byzantine. Uh, but after he died, he couldn't give the uh, title because the title came from the Pope. He had to give it to a man. So he gave the title to uh, a, cousin. A, a distant cousin. And so distant cousin has one half of the property. She has the other half of the property. And uh, they both produced wine. Uh, and both, the one is called... Uh, one is under the name of the same of the princes, and the other one is called Tenuta Fiorano. It's a complicated story. Uh, both of the new ones are available in Rome, and both of them are available in the United States. But to me, uh, the best ones uh, were made by the prince. You need a lot of time. The wine needs 20, 30 years really? before it shows. It's an incredible wine. It's Cabernet Merlot. 
it, it, okay, I was gonna say, oh, Cabernet Merlot, okay, great. And I, you mentioned Kikino, and I saw on one of your blogs, you had a picture of an, an artichoke. Yes, of yes. course, artichoke. That's, Rome is very famous for that, yes? Yes, indeed. Uh, they, the, either the braised artichoke, a la, Rom, uh, a la Romana, or the Judea style, which is the deep fried artichoke. Okay. That's very crunchy and crispy. So one is stewed and soft, the other's crunchy and crispy. Both great. They both sound great, right, yeah. Yeah. All right, and I saw on your blog you had a favorite wine bar in Rome, which is called L'Angelo Divino. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I first uh, wrote about them uh, for the Wine Spectator a number of years ago. I oh, you did? Okay. I did an article on the wine bars in Rome. What, what part of Rome are they in? Uh, they're near the Campo dei Fiori. Okay. Very close to the Campo dei Fiori. And he's on the corner. Yes, L'Angelo, <laughs> really? as the okay. name suggests. And uh, so that's how we first uh, met uh, Massimo, the owner, and he's great, and he loves loves uh, to talk to Charles. Yeah, he's very knowledgeable. Uh, he uh, Chesanese, the Chesanese group, uh, great from the Lazio. Uh, yeah. Went in one night, he gave a tasting of a whole bunch of them. Uh, he's he's very very knowledgeable. Always tries to come up with things I never had before. Uh, the food is, is is very good. Great cheeses uh, and salumi. Yes, yeah, salumi. Uh, yes, Locally, nice, you know, produced. Nice ravioli. But the thing is the wine. He's very, very knowledgeable, very, very big wine list. And uh, what I, I like about uh, Rome uh, is that they can often find things there. Uh, for example, Valentini Trebbiano is less money there than it is retail in New York, as is Emilio right. Pepe's uh, uh, Multiple Chiara di Abruzzo. Uh, and all the vintages, and you can find them That's uh, great. in restaurants much less than you can find them uh, retail in New York. So when I'm there, I, they're ex a little expensive, but uh, they're worth the, the money. And he has uh, quite a, a selection of them. It's one of my favorite places. I, I'm going to I'm gonna have to remember that because you and I have both talked about this and written about the Valentini. Yes. For Vienna de Brut. So it's, it, it's arguably the best white wine in Italy. It's a legendary wine. I won't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> and not, it ages for wait, but 10, 15 uh, years at least. Yeah, we had gone to uh, Riccioli. Yeah, that's another great with restaurant, a, yes. wine bar, Salud Maria. With, okay. a, with a friend who's in the uh, in the wine business, she knows them very well. It's difficult to get into. Even uh, it was in the last date. It was the last date we were in Rome, in fact, and it, it was crowded. Well, most restaurants weren't. And uh, she gave me the uh, uh, wine list that order whatever you want. And there was the uh, 2014 trip <laughs> from Palestine. Oh. Uh, as I said, for quite a less less money, uh, and I could get it, and it went with my uh, pasta carbonara, which was, I must say, fabulous. Well, they're renowned for it, carbonara. Yes. It's really excellent there. Yes. Very creamy sauce and uh, very crunchy bits of um, guanciale, which is just irresistible. The chef came out and spoke to us and gave us some hints on, on some of the dishes that he sent out and it was a wonderful lunch. That's another place not to miss. And even if you want to have a picnic, you can stop there, pick up your wine, pick up some cheeses and meats. They have a bakery just down the street. You can buy some great bread and you're all set. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds great. I, I love carbonara. And what is their secret? Is, 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 is they have a particular milk that they use for the sauce uh, or is it? All of the, no, all of the, their uh, products are, uh, 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 local local products from right. farms nearby, and uh, there's no milk in it. There's no cream in it. Oh but, no, really. Uh, he uh, uh, makes it um, ha have a creamy texture. He didn't quite divulge that, but um, okay. All right. uh, they attribute it to the local eggs and uh, cheeses that they use, and okay. the way that he whips the eggs with some of the cooking water. I think gives it that creamy texture. The other place that uh, my other uh, second favorite, which we're going to since 1983 also, is the Ilmatriciano. And I go crazy for the uh, fried zucchini flour stuffed with uh, mozzarella and anchovies. They just drive me completely crazy. And That's great. Uh, sometimes we have them with a, a glass of Prosecco uh, to begin with. They uh, also have the fried artichoke. Uh, uh, which I love also, and that's usually uh, my appetizer. And um, they also do a very good pasta matriciana, 
And uh, they also do bacala in a tomato sauce with raisins and pine nuts. Pine really? really? Yes. It's which, a Friday special. Which I love a, a lot. And uh, it, it's, it's quite, again, both of them are traditional Roman uh, restaurants. Their wine list is uh, not as good. Uh, uh, I usually go uh, and uh, there and order a, a local uh, you know, wine from either Frascati or one from uh, around the area of Corey, uh, something from the, uh, uh, that, that area, which goes very well uh, with the food. Uh, they also do a good uh, uh, bacho. Yeah, the lamb chops are great, but the time we were there this year, we all ordered the roast lamb. It was sensational. It was so succulent and moist. It was, the lamb there is very uh, different from the lamb that we find on this side of the Atlantic. Okay. Right. And uh, it, it's um, always cooked well done. They don't, they don't cook it rare and uh, it has great flavor. And you also love the, the, the uh, fragoli. Oh, they, crazy for them. Well, in the spring, they have fragoline, which are the tiny uh, woodland strawberries. The French call them fraise du bois. In okay. Italy, it's fragolini del bosco. And they're divine. When, when they have them, I always order those. They're great in the fall. <clears throat> I get the roasted porcini mushrooms there. They're crisp on the outside, very meaty. And it, it's, you don't need meat. Uh, you don't need a main course. Yeah. They're sensational. You're, you're definitely making my mouth water, I'm sure. Uh, people listening yeah. as well. So. I only hope we can get there together someday. <laughs> yes. I, I, let's, let's plan on it. So yeah. you know, I, I think I'm going to go back. Chicago for the Fiorano. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, see, we'll, 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 we'll do it. So, But I, I think a, I'm going to be there in September. We'll see what happens. But I have a friend who uh, uh, also the a very large collection of Fiorano. He would love to come. Another restaurant we go to. Uh, we like is called Louis uh, uh, Louis Dewey Landroni, which means it's Landroni, see, see. yeah. And uh, this is a restaurant uh, uh, we prefer at night, and we like yeah. the fish there. And um, uh, uh, you could explain the two dishes that you like. Yeah. Well, we always we always look for the most gardini. The the season for them is very short, but they are little tiny squid in the squid family, I should say, about the size of your thumbnail. They are so really. Itty. Right. And they make a delicious tomato sauce with the squid, those little squids in uh, it with the squid ink also. And they also do the squids fried. So if they're in season, we always order both of those. But uh, they do great octopus salad to, to begin with potatoes, which is very traditional. And um, if I'm eating and, lightly, I like the langoustine. Yeah. Langoustine are very hard to get. They sit grilled. And the first time we were there, the woman next to me had them, and I smelled the, uh, and I just, uh, they're just wonderful. They do a really great job. The, uh, the people are very nice. Uh, again, their wine list, Italian, I was, again, mostly uh, the, uh, uh, wine from uh, the area. Okay. And usually white, white wines from, uh, you know, from, from the area around Rome for the most uh, part. Uh, well, because they specialize in fish, yes. but they have other dishes. They have other dishes too, yeah. You know, I just want to point out yeah. that that uh, you might be able to sense by now that we really like very traditional food. Yes. I mean, I think I think uh, experimenting is great, and there's a lot of chefs doing some really creative stuff. But when we go to Italy, what we really look for is home style cooking, the traditional dishes, and um, we tend to steer away from. Uh, you know, from the fancier restaurants and right. the trattorias and the old studios, because that's really what they do best. Yeah. Also, I you uh, like the cake, the dessert there at the... Uh, no. No, at, no, Patricia. Where do you no, like the at cake? Armando. Armando, yes. Armando that's another Pantheon. favorite. <laughs> Armando Al Pantheon is right by the Pantheon. Okay. And it's, I think they have a Michelin star, but uh, it's a very, very traditional restaurant. And everything they have there is great. I, I don't think I've ever been disappointed. Uh, but uh, believe it or not, they have a great dessert. I'm not a big dessert eater, so I, that's why I say believe it or not. But uh, the dessert there is um, a delicious cake with a layer of ricotta cheese, a layer of uh, fruit jam, and then a crumb topping. And it's very tender and very, very good. So. Uh, that's what Charles is thinking of. I shouldn't say this, but they have the Fiorano. They oh, have the okay. 90 and the 93. <laughs> it's, it's, it's expensive, uh, but uh, last, every time I go there, uh, uh, they don't always give it to me. 
Last time we were there, we were lucky. Uh, we got a bottle of it, but the time before that, they wouldn't sell it to me. I said, I'll buy all you have, give it to me. They wouldn't do it. Really? They come, they were out of it. The next time I went, I ordered, and I got to know them. When I walked in, they knew who, they knew who uh, I am. We had a very interesting experience there, and I won't tell it. Next time, I'll tell you when I see you. Okay. Uh, about walking in, one of, the wait, one of the waiters recognized me from my wine bar. Do, do, do you two, do you have a special table that they put you at? I mean, they must have. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we usually sit out, yes, one on the side on, on that restaurant. Okay. The Kino also puts us in a, in a special table. Uh, but we're going there for a long time, you know, and the food is always good. Sure. But it's, a it, it's a nice place, very traditional. That's great. That sponge cake that Michelle talked about, what would you, what wine would you serve with that? Charles, what wine have you enjoyed with that? A, a, a wine for the uh, cake that we have at Oh, a dessert, a dessert wine. Yeah, you know, light. Whoa. Any kind of light, light kind of dessert wine uh, too uh, heavy. would be fine. I think nothing, nothing okay. too heavy. Um, off hand, you know, you could even do a, a, a Vincenzo with it would work. Uh, would work okay. very well. I'm trying to think something uh, from the Rome mm -hmm. area dessert wine. There may be some, but I can't think of one uh, off hand. But almost right. anything. We don't tend to by that time dessert comes <laughs> usually. Uh, don't have a don't do dessert wine. Uh, because uh, usually so afterwards, have no, because I have grappa afterwards. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so my mind is not on usually. Uh, I, can, I can understand. Right, right. Yeah, you know, but uh, I'm trying to think there must be some uh, that I can't think of one over here. Maybe, maybe in the uh, Aliatico or something from Elba, something like that. But Yeah, that, 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 would, be, that would be fine. Yeah. In fact, that would okay. probably work very well. Right. Uh, a, a, red, a red dessert wine would probably go very well. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. One other restaurant I saw on your blog from Rome is La Campana. Yeah, the reason we go there is they do the best roast suckling pig that I've oh, ever wow. had, I think. It's really super crunchy, the skin on the outside, and then the meat inside is very tender, and they serve it with potatoes roasted in, in the uh, uh, pork fat. And it's, it sounds like I'm such a big meat eater, but at home I rarely, rarely eat meat. Oh, really? But when I'm in Rome and I, I come across uh, pork that's done that well or lamb the way they do it, I, I just can't resist. So we go there for, for the uh, roast pork. And they also do very good uh, stuff. So they, a lot of their food is good, very traditional. And they're great because they're open on Sunday evening. Wow. A lot of places aren't. So if you need a place on, on Sunday evening, it's a good place to go. Good, good, okay. And it's very central. There's also, uh, I have to mention, well, one cafe. Oh, <laughs> all right. No, 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 it, it's, it's, it's death because, uh, go ahead, dear, you can. You can. Well, we, we discovered one morning, we looked out the window of the apartment we were staying in and there was this big crowd, a lot of people, a lot of, bustling uh, outside of a uh, cafe that was across the river from us. And so we decided to take a walk over there and, and look around. And we discovered that the crowd was there for their hot, freshly baked croissants, oh, wow. uh, which are just excellent there. And they have different kinds of stuffings in them. You don't see uh, anyone fussing very much about the about uh, croissants in uh, Rome, but um, uh, they're not like the French ones, so please don't don't try it and be disappointed because okay. they're sweeter and they're uh, chewier. They're not they don't have that crackling crust, but what these do have is a little bit of sweetness and a um, a wonderful stuffing. And uh, the one that Charles prefers is a ricotta and chocolate chip stuffing. Oh, wow. Sheep ricotta. <laughs> Sheep's ricotta, which is it's a Sicilian place. Yes, right. which is more flavorful. Well, Charles, when you and I were in Alba a few times, I know you had a, a specific cafe that you always wanted to go to, and you always got a croissant, and I did too, but are they like the ones in Alba, or they sound like they're different? Uh, they're, they're different. They're, they're really different. I, I think these are some of the best that I've ever, I've ever had. I really. remember that. I, I love and, croissants. Uh, and uh, you have to go early, uh, because the ones with the, with the sheep's milk, <laughs> regatta, goes out right away. Does and it? One, okay. day, one day we got there late, and uh, we got to know the waiter because we go there a lot. A nice young man, and he said, "You know, we're all out of them. But if you wait 15 minutes, I think they're making a new patch. Uh -huh. so coffee's later." Right, right. 
the coffee's excellent uh, we had too. them yeah no the place at the place in i don't know maybe because the turnover here is so great but very few tourists the people line up at the counter i mean it's just one it's a typical scene like you remember from the old days being uh in, uh, in in Rome or in, in Naples, uh, it's just crowded all the time. Uh, people sitting, people standing. It's a really big pastry shop, and it's really terrific. Great. I just opened up the question and answer thing. I'm sorry. I, it was, I guess it just came up. It, it's from Louis Mele, and he said the name of the bar. I, I don't remember what <laughs> bar we referred to, but do you remember a particular bar you mentioned? Or does he mean Angelo Divino for the wine bar? Uh, maybe the, I don't. I don't. I don't know. What the pastry he, he shop the bar. bar that we're talking about is Cafe Ruscana. Okay, thank it's you. Right on on the Lungo Tevere. The, he said the pastry shop. So yeah, it's Cafe Ruscana. Okay. And, what uh, I'm going to do is I'm recording this, and when I do the editing, there won't be much editing. This is a nice, easygoing, flowing conversation. But just at the end, when I post this for YouTube, I'll put some title cards at the end, and I'll list all of these different restaurants and wine bars and things like that. So um, shall we head down to Napoli? One more, two more things. Okay, she sure. Favorite, no, she has a favorite gelato place. You can't, how can you- Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, this is our other favorite coffee bar and gelato is uh, 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 Ciampini. And uh, we love sitting in that, it's in a beautiful square, the Piazza in Lucina, very central Rome. And it's, it's just heavenly to sit there and have a coffee or a little sandwich or something or, or even breakfast. Or uh, we love to go in and get ice cream there. It, it's, never, it's not frequently mentioned as a place for gelato, but I think their gelato is super. It has the right balance of sweet and not so sweet. I, I agree with you. Yeah. No, I, we, we Stratia always, is my favorite. <laughs> I chip. love it and I get it all the time there and it's, it's really good. And what else did you want to mention? Oh, you, you want to mention uh, Ernie's place. Oh, well, you know, if you want a cocktail bar in Rome, and sometimes you just would like to have a cocktail, uh, the, the Hotel Villon, we discovered. It's a very swanky hotel, uh, but uh, they uh, have um, a wonderful cocktail bar. And uh, we uh, discovered that the, the uh, bartender, a beautiful young woman, uh, she makes the best cocktails and she's a great host and uh we go there a lot <laughs> and they give you enough food to have dinner yeah there's all kinds of snacks that <laughs> it's, it's, it's a gorgeous place the setting is fantastic yeah yeah it's really nice great great I like that before we move on to napoli uh i'm going to forget otherwise but uh, i got an email this morning from joe and scotto oh she wanted oh, me to say I hi yes. from, from from joe and from her so she right. to pass that along, so. good to see you great um, and to start with Napoli, I got an email with three questions from a mutual friend, Charles, who we know very well and is a lovely person, Marina Alimo. Oh, yes, we know her. And <laughs> she wrote it in Italian. I could, I could try my Italian, but I think most people here probably would rather my speak in English. So, but she said, first of all, you've been coming to Napoli for many, many years to celebrate your wedding anniversary. And she asked, what's the first place that you want to visit when you arrive? Well, wow, that's a that's a uh, a good question. I maybe Gambrinis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe Gambrinis. <laughs> it's a cafe. It's a tea room. Uh, they have wonderful coffee. It's usually very close to where we stay, and uh, so uh, we we probably find ourselves there first thing. You can have a cocktail there. You could have a wine. Uh, if it's uh, if it's chilly out, we sit in the tea room and and have our breakfast there. Sometimes it's that's a lovely place. The tea room is very central. The, the back room is gorgeous. It's like from you know, nineteenth century. Nineteenth century. Wow. It's gorgeous. The service and also they uh, have Michelle's favorite pastry, which I can never pronounce. Oh, I have to have a spogliatelle first thing. Spogliatelle. I love okay. spogliatelle. Oh, yes. So, uh, and, and if you don't know what that is, it's, it's a crispy pastry in the form of like a clamshell, ricotta, orange filling inside, and oh, you have to have that in Rome. Uh, sometimes also and we- Naples. Yes, yeah, and no, after no, we'll, no. we'll may have some pizza on the street. Oh yeah, that's so the Bello has a pizza place uh, on the Via Toledo. So depending um, on the time of day. Depending on the time of day. <laughs> it's either a pizza first thing. <laughs> right, okay. Right, and then- uh, and then we worry about the dinner at night. She has another right. question. Well, Marina has two more questions, but let me 
Good. It goes back toward the end, but because you mentioned the P word, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one man in America who knows more about pizza than anybody, it's Charles, because he leads <laughs> pizza tours. And well, maybe, maybe there's two or three people, that, but. Uh, but uh, He's eaten more, I'm sure. <laughs> it probably, there you go. Okay, right. he has that title. So, Charles, tell me about the, uh, we could spend a whole hour on this, but the, 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 yes. best, the best pizza in Napoli. And, well, uh, to me, there's only one kind of pizza. Right, of course. It is Napoli. Uh, and to me, there's only one pizza, and that's margarita. Margarita, see. I love margarita, and the test of any, any pizzeria, <laughs> they can make a margarita, they can do anything. Michelle is a little more adventurous. She likes different toppings. Uh, try, and there are very good ones. But to me, the first thing I go when I order is a, uh, a margarita. And uh, we've gone to, uh, not, I, I couldn't say all of them, but though, though uh, 30 years ago, they were much less than they are today. Right, right. So we did, we right. did much better. Uh, and uh, I, it's just wonderful. And, you know, they come out of the oven. And like, you know, as you know, being there, Tom, food is the most important thing to them. And it's not the check. Uh, and it's not <laughs> this or that. The food and getting the pizza in the oven and getting it to, uh, to you when it comes out is still piping hot. In fact, a lot of times I get it, the pizza still smoking. The smoke's really? coming out of it. And that really makes it. And of course, if you do it with the fior de latte or with the, um, uh, uh, the buffalo mozzarella and the, uh, you know, the uh, tomatoes from Vesuvius. <laughs> I mean, you just... I'm getting hungry thinking about it. Uh, you're, you're in heaven, right? It's just, I could taste it, and, and to me, it's 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 the perfect it's the perfect food. I love it. Uh, but show us something about some of the pizza, other the other pizzas she likes. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Well, uh, one of the the funnest things that we ever discovered in Naples was walking down the street one day we near the old market, and there were two guys with a cauldron of oil and they'd had set up like a card table with, with food on it. And they were making calzone to, really? to order. Wow. And you could tell them, well, I want th those greens and I want some, I want some ham and I, uh, and I want this, some mozzarella. And they would fill a piece of dough for you and drop it into the oil and, and fry it. And it was Great. just, Fabulous, just sensational. So uh, that's a tradition in Naples that people don't think of the pizza fritta, and okay. you can find it. It's it, it's like a, a sort of like a fried calzone. Imagine that, and uh, lots of uh, pizzerias uh, serve that, and it's uh, I think it's quite in right now to have uh, fried. Okay. Pizza. And uh, so uh, one of our favorite places is Don Michele. Don Michele, see? Yes, and it's I, very they only have. Uh, a margarita and marinara. That's it. Two pizzas. Oh, really? really? Oh, yeah. And I don't, I don't think they serve wine, wine. No, don't serve wine. Beer and uh, and water and Coca Cola, and that's okay. it. And uh, the I believe their pizzas are five euros. They're bigger oh. than most, and uh, you have to go early. Otherwise, there's a line down the block. The first time we went there, we were. We were told not to go there because a dangerous neighborhood. And we got there, there were all Mercedes parked in the, <laughs> the corner. Well, I, so, I, think, I think several U.S. presidents have, have, have had pizza there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's very famous. Another yeah. place we like is on the uh, Vomero called uh, uh, La, Na, Na, La Natizia, Lin which yeah. is very, very, very good place. He, has a, he also has a place next door, which he does uh, the same, the street food. The street food. Naples is, is known nice. traditionally for the yeah. street food. And uh, so he made a specialty of it, and he serves the most delicious and unusual things you'll find in Naples. So yeah, that's worth the visit. Yeah. There's another one <laughs> outside of town, on the, in fact, on the way to uh, Pompeii, and it's, just, it's hard to pronounce, it's called Hakademia. Hakademia, so that under blank, right. Yes, and uh, we went there, we've been there twice. Fantastic peaches, they, the pizza the peaches just dances. But he served a fried, pizza stuff with, with the mozzarella we got there and um, uh, guanciale. I don't recall actually. Oh, I thought I was going to die. It floated. It was fabulous. Fabulous. Uh, and it's about, I guess, a half hour or so outside of uh, uh, <coughs> Yeah, there are some great ones outside of yeah. Naples. Uh, well, the, the last time to, I'm uh, sorry, the last time Charles, you and I were there, the last time I was yeah, the last time you and I were there we were with a group and we went to Le Parule. Yes, yes. we were just, just going to say we that. There, yes. I was gonna, and, and it's, and I, you hadn't been there. I hadn't been there. And I looked at you and you, and I said, you know, how is it? And I don't, can't remember 
you might have had so much pizza in your mouth, all you could do is give me a thumbs up. But right. I knew I had, I knew it was a great place because they got the Charles Ciccoloni stamp of approval, but it was wonderful pizza. It you was. know, they, they renovated it. I just oh, did it? I, I saw it on, on uh, the web and uh, they fixed the place up. It's really pretty, pretty swanky now, but um, as long as the pizza is the same, I'll go back there anytime. Oh, I, I will too. And it was very young pizzaiolo, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, he's, yeah, it's very nice. But in fact, he opened up a place in Sorrento now. Oh, he did? Okay. Yes. Uh, and we were there, not this year, last year. Yeah. We were there. And uh, the pizza was just as fabulous. And then he made for us, I guess it was a baked macaroni, <laughs> cut it up into, fried. Fr and then he fried it. And <laughs> it was, it was incredible. It was incredible. Oh. It was just, it's a wonderful place. And I remember you didn't have, I had the pizza, you ordered. I had some pasta. pasta. Right. I remember that. And Which you liked great. it, you were crazy for it. It was great pasta, but yeah, I still remember that. Pasta. And right. now we were there, um, you know, they often ask me, what, <laughs> what do we drink with pizza? One of the things is the, uh, the uh, sparkling Graniano. red wine, uh, Graniano. Graniano, and there's one called uh, uh, Otto uh, Uve. Uve, which means eight grapes. I think right. it's the best Graniano uh, made. Uh, don't it's, tell uh, people about Graniano because I agree with you, and it's, it's a wine you don't see here in the United States very often. No, there is one, another one brought in by somebody else. Uh, there is, I can get it in New York. But not, I don't think it's as good as this one. I'm going to okay. try from that. Also, there's this, uh, the same, uh, uh, makes a, uh, a uh, Spermante Asperino. And as, Asperinia. And I love that with pizza also. I, I agree with that also. Uh, yeah. Petty Rosso. And I have to, otherwise, uh, my favorite Falangina is the Donna Chiara. <laughs> It is, it is wonderful, and, and it I, is just wonderful. A, I just did a uh, webinar with, with uh, Eladia, so she'll be happy I, to hear that. I say this because Ed McCarthy from Wine for Dummies tasted right. and said it was the best um, Palangini you ever tasted. Great. And Great. also, our friend, uh, we went to Trattoria San uh, Ferdinando, recommended by, um, um, what's his name? By uh, Lois, Massimo Lois. Massimo Lois where we had his, uh, his uh, Pellegrino, that was two years ago. This year, we went, uh, same restaurant, great, great place also. Uh, and uh, um, our friend Ernie DeSalvo, who was a big wine collector, can afford anything. I had he dinner had, with Ernie and you one night, right? He had, he had the, the uh, uh, wine, he went crazy. He thought, the Falangini, he, he loved it. I mean, he said, and I told him with the price, I think it was 13 euros in the restaurant. Right. That's he went great. crazy for it. I that's mean, great. that's why I bring it up. He just, he just, he just loved it. I think it's great. That's also a, a very good restaurant. The other, the another pizza place, which is very unusual. I mean, it's the most unusual pizza place <laughs> I've ever been to. It's in uh, uh, Torre del Greco. Michelle will tell you about it. It's okay. Called Sakura, like the Japanese uh, um, cherry blossom. Right, right. Sakura Pizzeria. And uh, you know, if you if you need a day out of Naples because it's so busy and it can you know it gets really hot in the summer, uh, uh, it's a, a great little day trip. And they have a beautiful swimming pool and they have an excellent pizzeria. Right, really, there. really. that's and, great. Yeah, we we had a wonderful time there and yeah. and had a lot of delicious pizza. Yes. The, the pizzaiolo has a really light hand. I, I appreciated that. It's a very large swimming pool, very nice, beautiful. You can just go and you sit day. on the patio overlooking the swimming pool when you have uh, your pizza. And the uh, tomatoes were uh, from land confiscated from the uh, Camorra. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're very uh, Very good. The, the, all the pizzas okay. we had were good. The margarita was, was excellent. Uh, people were, were very, very nice. We had a, a very wonder, wonderful time. It's a great place. And if you want to go for a weekend to get out of Naples or if you're driving around and just in the summer. You can stay the swimming too. pool, just go for the pizza. <laughs> Not the summer. Pizza yeah, was that good. Yeah, that's great advice. Well, we, we could go on forever on pizzeria, but we have, we're in Napoli. We have to talk about the seafood. Uh, seafood. Oh, boy. Uh, there are so many good ones. Uh, we went to Mimi alla Ferrovia uh, this last trip. And so we, had, blog, yes. we had just the best meal. Uh, Charles, I'm sorry I didn't order it, but I, I was trying other things. Uh, Charles had the uh, uh, pasta with, uh, what pasta was it? Pacari? 
I don't remember. No, it was uh, just regular spaghetti. Spaghetti with ricci, which is sea urchin. Okay. And uh, oh. he, he was just it's in heaven incredible. from that. Delicious, really fresh. Um, they did a fabulous frito misto of, of fish. Um, I had the uh, pasta with potatoes, which, you know, for a lot of Americans and those who are carb carbophobic, uh, it, it sounds uh, like something they would avoid, but it's just classically Neapolitan and theirs was a wonderful version. It's got a lot of, um, they, they uh, churn, sort of turn the, the potatoes and the, and the pasta together until it gets really creamy and uh, add lots of cheese to it. So, you know, it's divine. And another place that we like is very strange. It's called Da Nanella. Oh, Nanella's no, 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 not strange. It's no, fun. It's a place where uh, the, uh, <coughs> it's uh, 12 euros to eat. Your whole meal. The whole meal. Really? If you have any pasta, well. it's 15. Place oh. is marked. You can't get in. You have to go early. Uh, and, uh, it, they, is, it is chaotic. I'll it's, chaotic. <laughs> it's chaotic. It's uh, chaotic. And they have, the. Uh, I love uh, Alici. They had Alici Fritti. Anchovies. Which was Anchovies, right? Fabulous. I went crazy for them. And then they had uh, half pockery uh, and uh, tomato sauce. And it was great. Uh, I don't remember what. Uh, very simple food. Very simple they had food. wonderful but sausages. Fabulous. Uh, uh, they had their pasta and potatoes was wonderful. I have it there too. So if you're on a budget uh, or you just want to go someplace that's fun and doesn't take themselves seriously at all, right. uh, but the it's, food it's is a great, great place to go. Very popular. You've got to go either early or go late. Yeah, we haven't been there because last year we tried to go in there on the renovation. This year we got a single cross and we went, there was a line down the block. Wow. They get it. When you walk out after dinner, they give you a, 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 a table, they give you a, a, a token. A token. You can either have a baba or a coffee. Oh, really? Baba being the other pastry that's yeah. okay. typical yeah. of Naples. Yeah. But it was really, it's really a, a wonderful uh, uh, spot. The other place that we like to go to is um, the. Uh, oh, yeah, don't forget La, La Taverna Santa Chiara is one of our very favorite places. Okay. It's a small restaurant and it's near the, the, uh, the church of Santa Chiara, which if you're in Naples, you can't miss that. Is, is, that, is that central Naples? Is it more toward the, the Gulf or? Uh, it's in Spacanopoli. It's Spacanopoli, sure, okay. Yeah, it's right by the Piazza Gesù, where the, the Jesuit church is. Okay. And <clears throat> uh, we discovered it because it is a slow food restaurant. And I had seen something about it in the slow food guide. And they are very conscientious about using uh, products that are, you know, minimally processed, not processed, but uh, produced in very small quantities, small farms. Uh, they're very proud of, of the ingredients that they source. And the food is always wonderful. Every time we, we eat there, we uh, have a great meal. Yes. Lovely no, people. All the time. Yes. Very nice woman yeah. who runs it. And it's, it's tiny, just, but um, yeah. it's great. It's very nice. Personal service. It's one of those places which, you, you know, once you go, you go a couple of times, I know who you are. You know? Right, right. That, that's terrific. Let me, yeah, get, no, just, let me get to the, the second question from uh, Marina, because you mentioned the baba. But she, her question was about the, the pastry shops and the pastries, especially of Napoli, and how incredibly rich they are. And she wants to know which of these pastry shops you frequent and, and what are your favorite uh, dolci that, that you choose, <laughs> that, that you recommend? Well, uh, my family is from the Naples area originally, and so the pastry that I grew up with and that I always look for in, in Napoli is one my grandma used to make, and that's the pastiera, la pastiera, and it's the queen of Neapolitan pastry. And um, in, in fact, with Marina, we went to a shop that specialized yes. in it, uh, though we were too full to eat that day, unfortunately. That's the problem. <laughs> but, um, uh, it is a, 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 a crostata, a tart, a deep dish tart with a, a, a cheese and grain filling. And the grain has a, just gives it a texture. It's not a flavor component, really. But it also has orange and cinnamon in it and uh, some uh, candied citron and uh, candied orange zest. And it, for my family, it was the ultimate uh, dessert at uh, uh, Christmas time. And, Easter, time. Um, Easter time, excuse me. 
but also we had it at Christmas. I know. <laughs> they loved it so much. <laughs> so uh, that's something that I always look for. Uh, I mentioned the sfogliatella, which is the the uh, crispy pastry. Barbara. And you know, when I wrote when I wrote the Sopranos cookbook, uh, one of one of my favorites. Uh, I remember getting a, a message from uh, David Chase, who was the creator of the Sopranos, right. Right. and he said to me, he wrote, "You have to put in a recipe for sfogliatelle. You have to." But I, I said, "People don't make that at home. It's something that you go to a pastry shop to buy because it's a complicated sure. recipe." And uh, he said, "No." He said, "Whenever we say sfogliatelle on the show, <laughs> we get a hundred letters. So we have to have a recipe." That's great. So I did develop a very good home version of it. Oh, wonderful. But, yeah. Yes, you certainly did, my sweet. And the, the third one <laughs> is the baba, as I mentioned previously. And it's a, a yeast cake, a sweet <clears throat> yeast cake. And it's um, uh, doused in a, a, a syrup uh, with either with lemon, sometimes limoncello is used, or a rum syrup. I think rum is nicer myself. Yes, usually rum. Is yeah. Rum, but I, I've seen them. They, they, yeah. they do all different variations. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it has a cream filling, whipped cream. So those, those are three of the top ones. There are two different kinds of sfogliatelle, I should mention. There's the crispy one, and then there's the um, little uh, cupcake type one, which is a, a small uh, a tart with a double crust and the same sort of a filling. Uh, I guess those are the, um, the, the favorite ones yes. that, uh, that I'm familiar with. Right. Yes. And also the restaurants do serve different, you know, different desserts and different cakes and different tortas and like that. And unfortunately, we eat too much and don't really yeah. have a chance to go to the, uh, <laughs> to the pastry shops uh, like we should because we're very, very full from, uh, from lunch. I think this trip, trip that might be our theme. Right, right, dessert. Our, okay. We have dessert theme. We, we mentioned wine a little bit with Rome and we can't talk about Campania without mentioning wine and we only have a few minutes. So. I have two bottles here, and we've both been to these wineries and love them. And if you could mention, talk a little bit about this. Get this; it's kind of hard to see, but uh, it's yeah, a I'm Villa Riano, Fiano di Avellino. That, that particular one is called Alimata, and it's got the Trepicieri stamp on there. It's one of the best Italian wines of the year. Tell us a little bit about Fiano di Avellino and Villa Riano. Uh, uh, Fiano di Avellino. Uh, first of all, let me say I think that uh, uh, Campania probably makes uh, the, the the best white wines in Southern Italy. If not, maybe the best wines in all of Italy. Fiano, right? Fiano is a wine. Fiano is uh, Fiano, di Avel Fiano di Avel is is to me one of the great wines. It 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 can go with almost uh, a lot of different foods. Uh, it can wine that can last for twenty or thirty years. I've experienced with ones twenty and thirty years old. It's a fabulous wine. It is elegant. It has body to it. It has so many nuances of flavor. It is in fact one of my uh, one of my favorite line, wines. Uh, I had gone to the winery on a part of a press trip. We stayed there for it was a two and a half day press trip. We drank more wine, and this of all the he had a great uh, a great place. He even did a uh, uh, Aliana go, which is another grape in the M M M Flora, uh -huh. which I love. But this was the this I love that wine. Uh, in fact, I, I talked him into selling me two bottles of it. There you go. <laughs> Get right. home with me. But it's a fabulous wine. And, and you mentioned, we'll be fair to a few other producers as well. So you mentioned uh, Donna Chiara before with the Falangina. She makes a lovely Fiano di Avellino. Yeah, all, all, her, all her white wines are fabulous. Exactly, beautiful. Mara Sarno was probably... Mara Sarno, yes. She, she, another she, one she would not forgive me if I didn't mention her Fiano. No, but, and the other one, Teresa uh, Bruno. Yeah, Teresa Bruno. Teresa Bruno, what's the, the name Teresa of the name? Teresa Bruno also at, at Petivia. Yeah, yeah. And, really? and yes, she so had a, a 2009. Yeah. Their wines age beautifully. Yeah. Wonderful. I mean, just a really, there's so many good, so many good. Uh, oh, exactly. I'll just mention two other producers. Villa Diamante makes a superb, yes, outstanding yes. piano. And then also uh, Fiori di San Gregorio makes. And there's uh, De Mayo, which I love. It makes older ones. De Mayo also, it's right. So it's incredible. We, we have about three, four minutes left. So let's give the red a little, probably not the most famous red, arguably, but the most famous red of Campania and one of the most famous reds of Italy, yes, that would be yes. the Master Berardino Tarazzi. This is a 2008 vintage, which yes. is the baby, right? Oh, yes, yes. In fact, I think the 68 is uh, still drinking. Yes. In fact, a, a few years ago now, Antonio Master Berardino, when he, Master Berardino, when he passed away, we did a, um, uh, a dinner for him, a lunch at um, SD26, which unfortunately now closed, and uh, the son uh, came. 
uh, went and brought his, uh, his, his daughter with him. And it was quite a, uh, 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 a tribute to him. And the late Philip de Berardino was there. It was very, very nice. And they opened up the 68. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, our friend Tom Moresca introduced me to that. I was able to try it once, and I, it, it, was, it is an amazing wine. deserves every word of praise it's ever yes. received. Yes, fabulous, fabulous wine. Uh, I had it for the first time uh, uh, many years ago uh, with uh, Philip and with Antonio. Uh, first time, and the only time I came to the country, I got into a wine tasting. I just, when I tasted it, it just blew me away. It was one, yeah. of, the, one of the great red wines that I had in my life. Yeah, we, have, we have like two or three minutes left, so I have one question left from Marina. I will ask you in Italian, very slowly. This is pretty basic Italian, in case you don't. In case Michelle I'm is better Michelle, than me. Michelle, well, Michelle you, but, but this this is an easy one. But and I'll say it very slowly. Cosa ti piace di più dei napoletani e della loro cucina? Would you like the best? Everything. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you got it. That's it. That's That's very difficult. Difficult. Yeah, so, anything with eggplant in it, anything with pasta, anything <laughs> with tomato sauce. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just so many. It, we can eat everything. So many foods. It is wonderful. Uh, it's 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 a great cuisine. Uh, we, love we love it. We love the passion of the people. People, the whole the the, business. Their their uh, their their appreciation of their own uh, of what they have. Uh, I think is really admirable. And uh, we love everything that we eat Their there. love for their city. And they refer to Vesuvius as my Vesuvius. <laughs> I mean, oh, interesting. Really interesting. Okay. Yeah, it is just a, a wonderful place. We get caught up, we get caught up whenever we go there, caught up in the energy of the city, caught up in the food. We had gone to a, a, mu a museum. Uh, yeah, we went to the Capo di Monte. Capo di Monte, so which fabulous. is fabulous. We go to the Seven. opera when we're there. I mean, it's just a fabulous, fabulous place, a, a city. And if you should... Uh, as a tourist, you should go visit it. But <laughs> I mean, it's 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 definitely worth the, worth the visit. I mean, definitely, yeah. it's an experience. It's like a, like no other. It, I, I agree, and hopefully, the three of us and everyone, and many many other people will return there very soon. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, we're, we're waiting. Yes, I hope <laughs> I'm so. waiting. I'm waiting to return. Uh, this has been so much fun. First of all, we got a great picture. The video quality. This is the best I've had on Zoom. Oh, so. really? Good. Thank you to Zoom. So, but it, it it works sometimes beautifully. So, and um, it makes it so convenient. But you guys are so engaging. It's just it's just like talking to your friends. And well, you are friends, Thomas. Well, thank you. But we, we only had I only received one question, which to me tells me that there's, there aren't any questions. People are just fascinated by what you have to say. Great. I hope, great. They, I hope they I hope they enjoyed it because as much as we enjoyed doing it, much as enjoyed uh, talking to you, I hope everybody really really enjoyed it and they turned well, into well, thank you. The, I, I, when, when I asked you, you said yes right away. I thought it might be, it might be a good idea. And so you'll both love this, especially Michelle, but I have now lined up three webinars. And since Charles and I love Barolo and the wines of Piemonte so much, the webinars, three of them coming up in the next month will be with a winemaker and a chef. Oh, very nice. So, and, and I think that'll be fascinating. Actually, two, two of them with a winemaker and chef, one with a winemaker and a local sommelier in Piemonte. So I think that'll be a nice, instead of just talking about every Barolo and, and all of this stuff and, and the vineyards and the soil, it gets fascinating to see how they, they're gonna match it up with, with food and what the sommelier recommends. So I'll definitely let you know about that. And um, I think it will, if you'd like to, we'll do another one of these and we'll talk about Piemonte. And Please, we can talk about, yes, we can, we can talk about uh, yes. <laughs> Veneto <laughs> or maybe Romagna or anything, but yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Romagna. We just we were in Emilia Romagna in October, <laughs> in November. October, November. Yeah, November. Great. Okay. Yeah. So anytime you want to do it, Thomas, it's a pleasure, really. As uh, sempre un piacere for me. Il, 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 il piacere mio, sì, sì. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, ciao, man. ciao. Okay. Ciao, ciao.